Hi, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Welcome to my backyard vineyard, season three, episode four, where we'll be talking about bloom and petiole analysis. Petiole analysis is important because we want to understand the mineral nutrition of our plants at bloom so that they're properly fertilized and we get good growth and good fruit set. Okay, it's May 11th and we're just about in full bloom. The recommendations in Australia are to do it at about 80% bloom to do petiole analysis. And I'm going to start collecting petioles today to do a tissue analysis of my grapevines. But first, what is bloom? Let's take a closer look in my vineyard at some of the developing flower clusters. Grape clusters come from flower clusters and flower clusters with multiple flowers are known as inflorescences. So in this image here, you see a very young inflorescence with just the first cap popping off of one of the flowers showing its five stamens and the pistil inside the center of the flower. Bloom is usually regarded as when 50% of the caps off of the flowers fall off from the cluster. And here in this picture, you can see that the caps are falling off or being pushed off as the stamens extend outward, pushing the caps off and then they fall. Also note that the cluster structure has little branches that form off the ratchets. And so these berries are in little clusters of their own. Here I'm highlighting some of these little clusters by the circles. So let's go a little bit through the parts of the flower first. We have a flower that is consistent of a male part, which is known as a stamen, which is made up of the anther and the filament. And the female part has actually three parts to it, but I've listed just two. There's a stigma, there's a style that attaches to the stigma, which then attaches to the ovary where the eggs are. And this ovary is where the fruit is going to develop from the eggs and form a fruit berry for us. The grape flowers are self-fertilizing. The yellow pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma. No bees or birds are needed to pollinate these flowers. Note down here on the left, we have some cat flowers and the peduncle is the stem part that attaches to the cluster. And I just wanted to point out here in this one bottom left-hand corner, you can see the five anthers poking and pushing on the inside of the cap getting ready to push it off. And the cap is known as the calyptra. And these are actually the petals of a flower that have fused over the stamens and the pistil. And here we can look at a closer morphology and structure of the cluster, where you can see that there's the ratchets with laterals coming off of that ratchet, giving a tree-like appearance with branches. Those branches our laterals, which are then branched again, attached to berries, which are known as pedicels. Here you can see some dried stamens after fruit set and some dried caps. And here's a closer look at that lateral and pedicel. Cool pictures, I love this. So to collect the petioles, you want to pick a petiole that is just opposite the flowering cluster. So this one here and this one over here. I'm going to need 50 to 75 petioles to get an accurate tissue analysis. You can see my vines are doing very well right now. They've grown extremely well after my boron and potassium fertilization. I'm very happy with how they're growing. Okay, now for the petiole analysis. As I did last year, I collected my petiole samples and I sent them off to a &L Western Laboratories for a complete nutritional analysis. And they've sent me back my results by email. So let's look at the results. As you recall, with a soil analysis earlier this year, 
my soils were deficient in nitrogen, potassium, zinc, manganese, copper, and boron. The sodium and chloride concentrations in the soil are low, which is good because I don't want any salinity problems. Like last year, the petiole analysis has confirmed some of these results, but some of the soil deficiencies did not show up in the petioles as it happened last year. So in this year, in the petioles, we're deficient in nitrogen, but not in potassium. So the potassium treatment worked to include improve the potassium deficiency that was discovered in the soil and was reflected last year. And we have a very slight low concentration of magnesium, iron deficiency, and boron deficiency, but no other deficiencies are shown here. Let's critically look at the boron concentrations for a moment. The concentrations here are listed at 24 parts per million and the normal range should be in the 30 to 70 range. So clearly this is too low and may have important impacts on my vineyard, not only this year, but in the coming years. So it's clear I, I still have some nutritional deficiencies as indicated by my soil analysis and now confirmed by my petiole analysis. It's clear that I have a deficiency in nitrogen, boron, and iron. So I have to treat my vines for those things. However, I'm going to hold off on the nitrogen nutrition until after bloom. I'm going to give my vines some boron as I have before with a one gallon treatment of 50 micromolar boron. Now that's only temporary. It's clear that my boron treatment before bloom did not raise the concentrations significantly in my petioles. So I'm concerned a little bit that my boron is going to be low and I'm going to have poor fruit set. We'll look at that later in the season and see how that's done. In the meantime, I've contacted people about getting a boron fertilizer to put on the ground that will provide a more permanent, long-lasting effect on my plants. At this point, they are producing flowers and they are producing fruit, so I've got enough boron there. It's just barely in the deficiency range, but I'd rather be up at a much higher concentration and be safe. With the iron treatment, that's an easy solution. That's just using a spray of iron EDTA on my vines, on the leaves, and that should get that up to snuff pretty quickly. I've done this before, as last season, you can look at my treatments with iron deficiency for more details about how I do that. So to summarize here, I have done a soil analysis and now a petiole analysis of my vines for the second year in a row. And I have consistently had nitrogen, potassium, and boron and iron deficiencies in my vines. My potassium treatments clearly have treated my vines sufficiently as my concentrations of potassium in the petiole are in the sufficient range now. So I'm happy with that. I still need to add boron, and that matter is an important one that's not only gonna affect my vine growth, but also my fruit set for this year maybe, and also for next year. Remember, fruit is starting this year for next year. That is, the primordia for the flowers are formed right now in the buds and will be ready for making fruit for next year. So it's a two season event and the nutrition from this season can impact the fruit set for next season. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then please like it on my YouTube channel. And if you really want to see other videos like this one, then I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'm releasing new videos every week or every month, depending on whether I'm on vacation or not. So have a great day.